Welcome everyone to Build a Game Live Workshop. My name is Tristan and I will be working with you today and building a game. Today, the game that we are focusing on is going to be the Catapult game template. So I will be opening that up and starting that here in just a moment. You should be seeing my landing spot for the Bravo Zone on your screens here. And this should look familiar to a lot of you that have been subscribers of ours. A brief rundown of what we've got going on here. We've got the quick links to get into your content and your questions and even see your scores. We've got the templates that we have here at the Bravo Zone. Today, again, we're going to be working with Catapult. We've got some recent uh, test scores and things like that at a glance, some news, and then some assistance down here at the bottom, tutorials and things like that. Today, we are going to be working with Catapult. Now, Catapult is one of our more animated titles. It has some competition through trying to knock down an opposing team's tower by answering questions correctly when the other team does not. You'll notice once we click on this that at the top of this little window, it says that it can be instructor-led or self-paced. It also will give you some brief description of the template here on the right. I'm going to go ahead and click start here. As you can see, it has the same five steps that all of our templates do to create. I'm going to give a title here and we're going to call this July Build a Game Live. And today I'm going to be building an instructor-led template of Catapult. Now you can do either or, and this is where you choose which way you would like to go about it. Now Catapult is one of the templates because it can be instructor-led or self-paced. It has a nice variety that you can do with it as far as the uses. Uh, sometimes people will use this on a website to drive traffic. Sometimes people will use this in a newsletter perhaps in a live session as a review, or even in the middle of a session to break things up and create some friendly competition with all of your listeners. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click over here in my question library. Now ahead of time, I have built questions. I highly recommend doing this where you can just drag and drop questions in there. It makes your building process go much faster. So I, all I did was I took a question and drug it over from my catapult folder here. I'm going to do that with a couple more just to kind of show how easy it is to do that. Now, you'll notice the points over here keep on going up. So theoretically, the questions get harder and harder. If I want to change that, I can just move their order around. I can change what the points are worth by going into the question itself. So here, I just went into my polling question. For uh, So Catapult allows four different types of questions. Uh, this is my polling question I have in here. I've got five answers there, and you can change how many answers you want there. You can even bookend your question with preview and summary so you don't have a wall of text for people to read through on their devices. I've even added a public domain GIF there. I don't know why I added that particular one, but I thought it was humorous. So here we can show the percentages for each answer if we want to see that at the end so we can address things as an instructor uh, as they happen instead of waiting for a report at the end. And we can even to see uh, what people's responses are live as they answer the question. For a polling question, this could be kind of interesting. But uh, for other questions where maybe that you're going to be using this for more of an assessment style, you might want to have that toggle turned off. So that's a quick look under the hood of the polling question that I built before and just drag it over from my question library. I'm going to create a question in here though, right now. So I'm going to select as a true or false question. And then I'm going to just put in something simple here. We don't have to have anything complicated for this demonstration. Uh, so a true or false question, I'm going to put my name is Tristan. And that is of course true. I can preview what that looks like. That's what people will see on their screens when they are playing along. And if I wanted to, I could add audio just by dragging one of those file formats over here or opening, clicking here to open up my hard drive to drag the file over and open it. Or I can even record audio right inside of our template. 
If I wanted to, I could link to a URL, or if I previously uploaded media, it will be in my media library there. So that's how you can add audio. If you want to add media, those are the file formats that are supported, and you can add it much the same way. You would just click here. I can pick different things. So I'm going to pick, uh, this is another public domain image. I picked an image there, added that, and it is uploaded and ready to go. I can even link to a YouTube video where I just would copy and paste the URL for that YouTube video there if I want to use that with my content. So with adding the media, I'm going to just make sure that Uncle Wiggly uh, stays on there. There we go. There's the picture of the media. If I want to add context again, I can still add media and audio to the summary and preview slides. And I've got some basic text editing functions I can do with all of that. There in my settings, I can show the percentages at the end or live as they happen. So now I've got my questions. I can mess around with them if I want. I can even download them as a PDF or CSV if I want someone to check over my spelling or my grammar, or perhaps I'm not a content expert and I want someone to check over my questions and answers. So I draw, uh, drop four questions over here. I built one. I'm gonna build another one quick and we'll move on to the next item. Just really wanna show how quick and easy it can be to build questions. Now, granted, I'm talking over this, so it's taking me a little bit longer to get through this, but once you get your questions added to your library, you can drag and drop them over, gradually add your media, you can really create a quiz in as little as five minutes or less. And that's the whole point here is to show how quick and easy it is to do this. So I've selected a multiple choice question. I am going to select the number of answers for my multiple choice is only going to be two, just for brevity's sake here today. So my multiple choice question is going to be, uh, what pet uh, in your, in most, there we go, households is furry. So I'm going to put the answer for multiple choice here. Again, this is just for demonstration purposes. I'm gonna put a dog and then I'm going to put a penguin. So that is the multiple choice question. You have those two answers to choose from. And again, if I wanted to add a preview or a summary slide here, I can do that. So I can give some context and maybe talk about dogs are uh, very nice. And then I can do something like underline the word dogs or whatever using my functions up here. I can even put a URL link in here if I wanted to. So people would then click on that or I would click on that as an instructor led and we would go somewhere else and we could come right back to this. So I've got my preview there. I'm going to save that. Oop, I have to mark one as correct. Thank you for the reminder. See, it's so easy. It even reminds you to do stuff that you might've forgotten. So I've got about six questions here in my instructor led. Remember some I dropped over or dragged and dropped from my question library they made ahead of time. In my graphics, I can upload a custom logo and that would appear right up next to my title of my template that I just created. So I'm going to pick a custom logo here. We're just going to do the Minnesota State image there because that is where I'm from. I can mess around with the fonts and I can even customize the introduction screen. Here I can write a customized welcome message so I can say, Welcome to the webinar. And then I can add media, which again, if you're paying attention, it is very similar how we add media pretty much universally throughout the Bravo zone. Another public domain GIF there. And now I've customized my welcome screen. Here on the number four options, uh, so we're already on step number four. I can have people respond using their devices or their voice. If you choose voice mode, it does amp up the energy a little bit more in the room. And it does uh, allow people a chance to blow off a little bit of steam doing that and whatnot. It's a nice way to break up a session if you want to do that and get people moving around and getting excited over certain things. Or if you want something to be a little more official, you can definitely use the devices, and then that way you can record the answers a little bit more. It really depends on your needs for voice or device mode. With Catapult, it is a teams-based game, so I can then customize the name of the teams, the colors, or even their avatars if I so desire. So let's say I want to 
change that. And we're just going to do, oh, I don't know. I, I'm not going to do the medieval theme here. We're going to change this one into, let's go with that friendly looking giraffe. So now we've got a giraffe and a Viking. And if you even wanted, you could put your own custom image there. I can run a timer for each question. The nice thing about running a timer is it has some more variation in scoring. So you don't end up with everyone at the same score. So I can just mess around with that and go, let's say 30 second timer, and I'm going to reduce the points as time goes on. So there'll be a 30 second timer on each one of these questions. I can even customize the game text. So if I wanted any time in the game that it says something like welcome or start or next or back on one of the buttons, I can change what those are. So let's say I want to change the next button. We're going to change that and Let's go with keep on with the penguin, dog, and giraffe theme. Let's change this one to monkey. So now anytime the next button appears, instead of saying next, it will say monkey. Here is the information the people playing along will see when they first log in. You decide what information you would like to gather. Name, email, other customized fields. Or you can even have people put in from a selected field. Let's say you're doing some different, since this is a Teams-based game, you're doing some friendly competition between departments. So you can have something like accounting and HR and all sorts of things like that. And then now you can kind of compare scores between the different demographics there. So it's another way to, again, boost that engagement from your participants. And at the end of the day, that's what gamification is about. The boosted engagement increases the retention of information. And at the end of the day, that's what we all want, really. Also for people to have fun and enjoy when we are speaking to them. So finally, we're on the publish screen. I can practice this, which allows me to put in some mock participants that are controlled by the computer and run through the questions, helps me get my timing down, things like that. So I know exactly how long this will take or get a better idea of that. I can describe this to find it easy, uh, more easily in my content. If I wanted to distinguish this from something else, I can show this in my shared content with other users in my organization so they can use it. And I can decide if they even can edit it or not using that. Last but not least on the screen is the participant sign-in requirements. Now, right now, by default, all of our templates are no sign-in required. But I do want to point out, if you select sign-in required, we go over here to options. And now, if they aren't already registered, they have to register a password, a username, all of that stuff. The reason you might want to do that is if this is something more official, like an assessment, and you want to make sure you're tracking information properly, you might want to have sign-in required as the option. If I don't have sign in required, and I'll go back here to show this. So no sign in required. Now they have these fields that I select, they fill out, but it doesn't check it against anything. So they could make up a name, they could misspell their name, all sorts of different things that might give you some trouble if this was more of an official record that you needed. So it's a good idea, depending on how official something is, to do the sign in versus no sign in required, whatever meets your needs. So now I've built it in five steps. I showed how to drag and drop questions over from the library, and I'm going to publish it. Now, you want to unpublish this if you're going to make any changes. And in fact, it will yell at you a lot of times if you try to make changes without clicking unpublish. So for example, if I go over to questions and I am going to say, add a question, I'm just gonna go over here and I'm just gonna do a quick, poll question and how are you today doesn't really matter this is just for an example and we're going to have one answer on the poll and we're going to say great so now i've added the question it yells at me to unpublish to make any changes so i'm going to click unpublish so now i've made the change i'm going to go back over to publish and publish that so now that makes sure that any changes i've made are now kind of cemented in stone there. If I want, I can send this preview link out to someone. Uh, what this preview link does, and I'm gonna quick open that here in another window. This allows people to look over the questions and material with the right answers in there. And someone again can check it over and it's got the graphics there and all of that neat stuff. So you, someone can check over a much more finished product than they could 
back in just the question part where you're adding the questions. So since this is instructor led, I'm going to open this up and I'm going to be the instructor. Uh, so you can see how this looks and plays on your smart devices. I invite you all to play along. So I'm going to click play here. And as an instructor, I will have a moment to adjust some things here before it begins. So if I want, I can adjust the amount of teams. I can change the color names. I can do all sorts of stuff like that. And I am going to click automatically assign participants to teams. We don't want everyone all on the same team after all. I'm going to click start. There's my customized introduction. And if you look at the top left, I have my customized logo next to my title. And at the bottom, we have the link to join the session as well as my presenter ID. If someone was impatient, they could go there now and type in the ID and log into this session. That URL and ID will stay at the bottom of all of the slides. So this will allow you to have people come in late if they are, have to be somewhere else or something like that, and they can still hop in and play and they're not just stuck watching. So that's a really handy feature to have this just sitting there at the bottom of all of the screens. So we've got someone that got assigned to the giraffe team. We're waiting to see if anyone else would like to hop in on the Viking team. You can do that by going to the URL and typing in the ID or by scanning the QR code. So I'll give this another couple seconds to see if anyone else would like to hop in and play. And then we'll begin. And you can see what it looks like not only on the presenter screen, but what it looks like on your individual devices. Okay, we've got at least two on each team. Well, now three, three on each team. Wow, this is, I feel like an auctioneer here going up. I, I hear four, four. I digress though. Oh, I, wow, I should maybe be an auctioneer. We got another one hopping on another team. So I'm going to start the session and anyone that still wants to hop in, of course, can use that link and ID at the bottom to hop in. So here we've got your towers, we've got your avatars there, nice friendly giraffe and a semi-angry looking Viking. I'm going to move forward here. This is question one. The timer is on. According to Salesforce, what is the number one skill for a customer service representative to have? On the left over here, you can see that the meter is filling up and we can even see as a presenter, who we are waiting on to finish answering the question. So it gives us an idea as we're presenting to a group, uh, should we wait to the end of the timer or do we have 100% before the timer? Now, sometimes you will have to uh, wait. Other times it will just, people have that 100% and you can advance and you don't have to wait for that timer to go. If I want, I can take a look at the leaderboard since this hasn't recorded anyone's scores yet no one is showing up on the leaderboard. So I'm going to collapse that, get some more screen real estate here. And we've got a nice spread of answers here. But the most popular answer is at 38%. And we're going to go and see what the correct answer is. That is correct. Someone must have been on Salesforce or some of you must have been. I had no idea that would have been before I looked that up. The other top skills are empathy, adaptability, ability to use positive language and clear communication skills. This is an example of a summary slide. So instead of having that wall of text uh, on the same slide as the question, I now can convey some information and material in a way that's easier to digest. So Team Blue gets to choose their attack. So now they are all out voting on what their attack is going to be since they had the higher score there on that first question. And then I'm going to advance here in the interest of time. It looks like we have a clear winner. And that has put a magic potion and turned the giraffe into an ogre, at least for one round. Next question. Walmart is the world's largest company by revenue. True or false? All 100 is in, so then I can skip, uh, get to the end. We are split 50-50 down there. And that is actually true. I looked that up today. And here is, as of 2022, their revenue. An astonishingly large number. Team Red gets to choose the attack at this point. So go ahead and 
pick your favorite item to pelt the other tower with. All right, so we've got all the team votes in, and we are going to throw some garbage over. So enjoy your garbage, even with the cartoon little fish skeleton there. Here's an example of a GIF I put on the question. What way are you most excited to use Catapult in your training? This is an example of a polling question. There is points assigned to this, but there is not a wrong answer. So you can click away without abandon and worry. All right, so the timer has expired. We've got live classroom session review, but close behind is a game in the middle of a long training session. The newsletter got no love on this poll. All right, Team Blue, you had the most people answering that question because everyone got points on that. So now you get to pick what you're pelting the poor giraffe with. It is universally decided to be the fireball here. And now question four, we're almost done with this. What are the steps to reboot a modem? Select all that apply. And with the universal timer that I put on there of 30 seconds, Keep that in mind if, as some of you are, are getting your answers in here at the buzzer, uh, that universal timer will apply to all the questions. So if you have more words in some of what you are asking about, you might want to make that timer a little bit longer or perhaps worry about your wording to make the answers shorter. So you have the same chance of people getting it and they don't get frustrated. So you've got a nice smattering across the board. And uh, calling your friend that is tech savvy might be one of your individual steps, but it is not an official step. So now Team Blue gets to choose their method of attack. All right, a big rock is coming right back over there. 